Okay, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're going to be going over how fat is too fat. So basically, this is going to be based off our own personal opinion and our own personal experience. This isn't directed towards anybody in general. I'm sure there's people out there that might relate to this. So nobody get offended. And if you do get offended, well, I really don't know what to say. So for me, my experience with this is my personal opinion is what was too fat for me was whenever I was snoring all night, it was difficult standing up. It was difficult laying down. It was difficult moving around in general. And I just, I would get so winded and out of breath. And that's whenever I realized this is too fat. Like I'm not powerlifting no more. There's no reason to be this big anymore. I'm just, I'm fat and I'm too fat. So I need to lose weight because I want to be more mobile. What about you? What was the point that you felt like this was too fat for you? Same when you were having trouble breathing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mean me? Yes, yes. What, at what point did you decide that, okay, this this is too fat, this is too much, and what was the point that made you decide to, like, You change? want me to be completely honest? Yes. I never really felt that way. I So what made you decide to start working out and dieting? Just, like, feeling bad in other ways, not, like, about heavy breathing because I wasn't a heavy breather. Or well, obviously, you have your own reasons for it. Well, I know, no, no, I know. I'm saying, like, I didn't – it wasn't like I come to terms, like, oh, I'm fat. It was just – I felt bad overall, like I was fatigued, I was always tired, um, like my health issues that I had is what really made me change my habits, not for me, like looking at myself and being like, man, I'm fat, I should change this. It was more like, I might die. Well, that's always a good this. reason. <laughs> like, that's, that, that's a good reason. Well, because, like, for me, I just tried to always have loved myself. It was something I worked on. So it was, like, a gradual I got fat. And, like, it wasn't like I woke up and I was fat and I noticed. It was, like, it slowly happened. So I guess I was more oblivious to it. Oh, it always creeps above you overnight. You never wake up fat, you know. Okay, what about you? What, what At what point did you decide, like, this fat is too fat? Like, like what, what was the turning point for you? <clears throat> for me, like. There's no real, again, like kind of with her, there was no real turning point. There was points where I had discomfort in like putting my shoes on in the morning, like putting on my work boots, things like that, or just like my work shirts not fitting quite the same. But for like the point of like like snoring or like things like that, like that's something I've dealt with my entire life from like firstborn child kind of thing. Uh, like there's several stories my family have of me doing it when I was three, two, three years old in churches and things like that, just snoring loudly. So I don't know if it's something just with my airway passages or what, but like that's just how it is for me. Okay, so I guess I'm the only one who had a moment of clarity of like, ah, my blood pressure is elevated. I don't like being in the 140s and the 150 blood pressure in the mid 190s and oh, the mid 90s and. 140s and stuff like that so i want to do something to kind of correct that and get that down so i started correcting my nutrition which also led me to working out more and then focusing on my health but also my image and everything so i guess i'm the only one who really had that that moment of wanting to kind of get out of like hey you know i'm kind of fat and there's a lot of benefit that could come from me not only fixing my health but also losing a lot of weight in the process i think we were a little bit similar though because you kind of wanted to do yours due to health as well like your blood pressure and stuff like that and that's kind of i mean i don't really think you thought you were fat until you look back and then you're like oh well yeah you could be your own worst judge of character especially whenever you're like there's a lot of people out there that have hard this body dysmorphia right where they look really good but they feel like they still either are that skinny kid or that fat kid and there's people out there that are either really skinny or really fat and they think that, no, no, I'm looking good. Like especially when someone who's heavy and they go to being skinny and they overdo the cardio, then they start getting anorexic and then it becomes almost like a disorder where it's like, ah, man, dude, you're kind of looking a little bony there. And then you have the guys out there that get really heavy and they're like, nah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. And then until you lose it, then you're like, oh, <laughs> it was that bad or worse. Yeah, I mean, I knew I was heavier. I knew I wasn't like the ideal body look or whatever you want to call it, but I was happy. I wasn't. Well, I'm sure we were all happy. Like, I mean, you're happy too, right? I mean, I don't think any of us were unhappy. But you know what I mean? I wasn't 
all like, oh, I'm so fat. I just knew I was and I just. Right. Well, I, I know that. <laughs> but I'm saying like for me, though, it wasn't just the health issues for me. It was also, like I said, it was the movement. It was the lack of movement, should I say, and being stiff and uncomfortable. But I think the difference is, is who you are. You've always really big bit, been big into fitness and body, you know. So I think that's why you're, we're li- wired a little bit different than you because that's something you've always been passionate about. Yeah, and I think it comes down to, to, you know, we talk about holding yourself accountable and everything, but also being honest with yourself and how fat you are. Like for me, like I knew I was big and I didn't realize how big I was until I started losing the weight. I d- it didn't dawn on me because at any moment I was like, oh, man, in two, three months I could lose this weight. And it's going to be gone and I'm going to look great. And then three months came and went and I still looked fat and gross. And then six months came and went and I don't look nearly as fat and gross, but I'm still significantly fat and gross from where I want to be. So it's one of those things where it's like being realistic with yourself with how big you are and how much weight you have to lose. It's it's kind of like a eye opener when you actually start going through it versus sitting on the couch and you know, soothing yourself and being like, nah, you, you can lose it quickly. I mean, how much weight have you lost now total, Richard? Total, I'm close to, I think I'm getting closer to 50 pounds now. And this is what week total, even with the deload? Uh, so 12 weeks plus the deload week, that's 13, 14. This is be the 15th week. We're in the middle of the 15th week. Yeah, that's incredible. 50 pounds in 15 weeks. That's absolutely incredible. I don't know what the math total is out to, like per pound per week. But it's it's one of those things that we talk about, you know, like if you could lose one or two pounds a week, that's amazing. And like your goal was roughly one to two pounds a week, right? Yeah. When it started out. Yeah. Like that's where I was aiming at. And also like well, 3.3 3 pounds is what it comes out to 50 pounds over the course of 15 weeks is 3.3 3 pounds. Go, go ahead. But yeah. Like for me, the, like going to work and everything like that, I got lucky enough. I, I guess you can, if you want to look at it as lucky enough to where like my job, I didn't, Again, I didn't have any issues with work and being larger because I worked in a shop setting and I did inspections on rotors, things like that. There was no real confined spaces that I was in. I always had plenty of room. I was still able to bend down and do things that I needed to do when like when called for sort of thing. So again, like as my size got bigger, because when I first started my job, I weighed around 210, 220. And then from there, I gradually just increased over time, but it never, it never became like a detrimental thing. The one thing that hit me the most was I enjoy wearing my works button up shirts. And at one point I wasn't able to, and I had to go to wearing their t-shirts and I hated it because I just like wearing the button up style shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like button downs too and stuff like that. I much prefer that style of shirt as well. Like pearl snaps and everything like that. Yeah. So it could have worked fancy. So yeah, like that, that was one of the things of when I got to that size, I, like I did kind of hit that point of like, dang it. Like I don't want to be this big cause I, I, I want to wear my shirts that I like. <laughs> Yeah, no, and, and that's the thing. And, and clothing is a big driving factor for a lot of people. Like you have the group of people that are like, hey, I was really fat and I lost all this weight. So now I'm going to go ahead and change my wardrobe and I'm going to buy a whole new wardrobe and then throw away all my, my fat clothes. And then I always discourage people from doing that when I'm helping them lose weight. I'm like, no, no, keep, keep your fat clothes. Keep your fat clothes. Don't throw them out because you don't know if you're going to stick to this. I would love to sit here and tell you and be your biggest fan, but like you got this, you're never going back. But the truth of the matter is more people end up getting relaxed and going back to that than they stick with it. So it's like, give it a year or two. And if a year or two goes by and you're still down and you're still losing weight, then get rid of the clothes. But they're not hurting nothing just sitting there because the last thing you want to do is throw away $500,000 worth of clothes and have to rebuy all those clothes, you know? How many people do you know have done that? Well, me, I know a lot because I've helped a lot of people and seen it happen again. But I know well, you've, you've had friends that have done that too, right? Yeah, not me though. I'm a hoarder. I like to keep all my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, I got to get rid of all my skinny clothes. I'm not clothes. really a hoarder, but yeah. yeah I, I, like I, I think I said it previous that I have a lot of leggings, so they expand with size. So yeah. I've never really <laughs> had to like... <laughs> Stretchy clothes. Yeah, well, it's just not even because of being fat. It was just comfort. Like I, like I work in the gym setting, and before uh, my job now, I was a nanny for years. So all I did was work with children. So I didn't... I wasn't going to wear jeans or slacks to be a nanny in my own home. I wore leggings. Comfort was easy to get up and get down and move around. So my clothes have 
been the same. They just fit better now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so about the whole like uh, being delusional thing, I think a lot of people, they underestimate how heavy they are, and I think they overestimate how much they can lose. And, and I was guilty as one of those people too. And as I get older, it gets harder and harder to lose weight. I think that goes for everybody. I don't think anyone's like, yeah, man, I had a problem losing weight in my 20s, but whenever I hit 40s, man, the weight would just fall off of me. I, I don't I don't think that's ever been the case. And if it is, then, well, good for you. So I think it's important. Well, I guess not that important. If you're going to do it for health reasons, just start. And then if you're going to do it because you want to go for an image like bodybuilding or figure or competitive or whatever, I think it's good to know what your body fat percentage is. Like we all took our body fat percentages with a skin fold. I know skin fold calibers aren't the most accurate things. I know people hate on them all the time, but it's a form of measurement. So if you measure your thigh, your stomach, and your chest, or wherever it is that you, you measure, and then you, you take those numbers and you look at how much fat is in those areas, then you come back and remeasure them in a week, and then something's gone down. Well, that's, that's improvement, right? You're, you're making forward progress, which is great. And I think learning and figuring out what that number is and what your fat percentage is, even if it's if it's not accurate 100%, it gives you an idea of how much weight you need to lose per week. So to be realistic, you know, if you're 100 pounds overweight and you lose a pound a week, that's 100 weeks. That's two years worth of work. If you lose, you could cut it in half by doing two pounds a week. And some people like to rush it and floor it and try to lose as much as possible, but they normally crash and burn. So it's like, well, how long does it take to lose? Well, if you're 30 pounds overweight, it's going to take you 30 weeks if you go a pound per week. And that's sustainable. And you can maintain that and you can actually successfully do that. Now, Richard, you're losing three pounds a week, not trying to. You're shooting for one to two pounds a week, losing three pounds a week because you are so excessively heavier. The heavier you are, the easier it is to lose. And the lighter you become, the more difficult it becomes and it slows down. But overall speaking, you didn't really have like a a goal to say, I'm going to be down this much weight or this size or nothing. You were just in it to lose weight. When, when we first started the first 12 weeks, I didn't have a specific look or anything, but my goal was more, I was just hoping that at the end of the 12 weeks, I could get back to the lowest I was what, three years ago when I lost weight in like 2020, where I got down to 255. And I did hit right around that range of like 255 257 so i was i was proud of that but now i i'm making a much smaller goal and hoping like maybe at the end of this 12 weeks i can be closer to 240 or somewhere around there because again i didn't last time around i cut the meals down a whole bunch calorie wise this time i'm trying not to do that and keep it up higher so i still hope to lose the weight but not I know it's eventually not going to be as quick. You're still losing a weight per week right now or no? So last week I kind of just stalled. This week I reduced by like I do like brought my calories down by 100 calories and I have it's trending right now that I will be down a few pounds this week. That's good. So just for dropping 100 calories, that's yeah, so, pretty good. Uh, but you picked up the cardio too, correct? Well, yeah, like, so when we got back from the deload last week, I started off again with five minutes each night on the stairs. And now I'm up, like, this week I'm doing six. Next week I'll go to seven, eight. And then once I get to 10, I'll just run it at 10 for the rest of the time. But it's, like, uh, um, the goal, like I said, is still just to hit, like, that 240 range, hopefully. And if I get close, that's great. If I don't make it, it is what it is. I'll get it next time kind of thing. Yeah, well, you're roughly around, you said, well, 255 is what you started off at roughly. So if you're trying to shoot down to 240, you're going for roughly roughly 15 pounds. So you're shooting for just a little over one pound a week, which is actually really maintainable. Realistic. Yeah, it's realistic. And that, that that's a realistic goal. So like this goal is... And we talk about all the time having milestones. Like you have a big picture. Like I'm sure you would like to be around 200 pounds again, but right now that's so far away. It's like almost like painful to think about how long you have to go. But if you think about like, well, I could do 15 pounds. I could possibly do 15 pounds in three months and be realistic with yourself. I could do probably a little over a pound per week for the next 12 weeks and then reassess my goals from there and then continue moving forward or in the direction, whichever direction you decide to go. And the same thing for you, right? You you don't really have a well. You do have a goal weight, actually, well, right? I, well, I do, but for, for the end of this 
12 week cycle that we're doing i don't know if that's what y'all call it cycle but yeah okay look at me i'm so fancy mm-hmm. um i want to be in the 140s i'm it's i don't care for that 149 148 obviously the lower in the 40s the better but my goal is to be in the 140s at the end of this 12 weeks and you're not that far off from it i mean i i think you you said last or this morning you was were 156 yeah so you have six pounds to go so and then giving yourself 12 weeks and you're giving yourself basically half a pound a week to lose it right and that's again that's a very realistic reasonable expectations for what you're after now chances are you could do more than that and you can decrease the calories you can increase the cardio you can increase the output you can increase the workouts you could go a lot harder a lot sooner but when you get eight nine ten eleven weeks into this it's going to be wearing on you hard so starting off gradual letting your body get used to the stress the load the hunger by the time you get there you're in full force like a freight train it takes a while to get to speed but when you get there you get there because this is like the long haul. It's not like an overnight thing. It's not like you're competing in 12 weeks. You have a milestone you're trying to reach and you're moving on from there. Right, yeah. I mean, I've it's like, what, week two now, and I'm almost completely down like a solid four pounds, which is pretty good for just starting out. And I haven't really increased my sets and reps like I wanted to. Like you said, it's very important to start off kind of gradual so this week i'm doing two sets of each exercise versus last week when it was one so once i hit a plateau that's when i was going to start adding in cardio i don't want to do too much too soon and then hit a wall and be burnt out yeah that's that's the best way to do it because actually we work out six days a week so we work out the whole body twice a week so the first three days you did two sets of everything this three days you're doing one set of everything Next week, you're going to bump it again accordingly. You're going to do two sets of everything, and the next three days, you're going to do two sets of everything, and then you're going to go to three sets, and then two sets, and then three sets, and then three sets, and the four set, and so on and so on until you gradually build up. Like you said, though, after the three sets, kind of more focus on increasing the weight more than so many yeah, like what, reps or whatever. Yeah, once you get to a total of three sets, the the intensity needs to increase. Like, because right. you you don't want to increase to ten sets. You have to stop at some point, and then working out the body twice a week. Honestly, three sets of everything for you is more ideal. And then you can increase the intensity by increasing the workload of the weights, and then focusing more on your form and how much weight you're actually lifting and moving, and being more t- uh, kind of tuning into. The movements that you're doing instead of working on like i have all these sets and all these reps that's exactly why well, I, I don't want to go that route because i know i'll get in that mindset especially because of i'm you know i get off work a lot later and you're usually halfway done with the workout so the last thing i want to do is be in there for a super long time alone yeah so okay we're gonna switch over to you real quick um every single time you start working out with me in the beginning every single time you always end up throwing up the first day or two, every time we you start coming back in, because you don't pump the brakes. So when you come in the gym, you're always like, no, nah, I'm just going to do what you do. And I mean, obviously you don't use the same weights that I use, but you try to keep up with the same reps and sets, and you always end up throwing up the first couple of times. But unlike everybody else I've ever trained with, you come back and you finish the night every single time. You're not throwing up no more, especially this second time around and everything. So, but why do you always jump in the deep end instead of coming in? As for someone who, because I'm sure there's viewers out there that that do that as well. So, being one of those, why is it that you approach it that way instead of coming into it gradually? Because I watched Eight Mile. There ain't no, like no such thing as halfway crooks. <laughs> oh, there you go, man. That's going back right there. That's going way back right there. But the not, old like, rabbit. <laughs> but yeah, like I can. I can ease into it, but all easing into it is going to do is like, I'm still going to get sore and I've run that risk of getting sore and then backing out. If I just go full force in, then it's one of those things of, I don't gradually deal with soreness and things like that. I'd take it all out. I get it all over with as soon as possible and then move on into the more fun, just like maintenance training sort of things, like getting in that groove and schedule kind of, kind of area. So like, you just, you just go through a hell week and just like I'm I'm yeah, just I'm just gonna go just, through it and walk through just, the fire. Yeah, you just get all get all that out of the way and then everything else after that is like, okay, I, I handled I handled that, I can get through everything else. Yeah. And it, it doesn't help either that like usually every time I come in it at that point in time it's usually like, All right, yeah, it's back day. 
or uh, like back and legs or something like that. And he's like, yeah, it's starting off with deadlifts. And it's like, oh, dang it. <laughs> yeah, good old, good old trusty deadlifts. You want to make someone throw up, man, just do a whole lot of deadlifts and squats in the same day. You'll get them to throw up. It's not difficult to do. But yeah, for me, I, I like to gradually start. Like anytime I, I have an excessive amount of time off of the gym, like, you know, anything of two to three weeks or longer. And I'm not saying I only take two to three weeks off. There's been stretches where I've taken months off of the gym because of, you know, life happens. But for me, every time getting back into it and I'm not motivated or driven and there's not a flip that switches, it's always like, all right, well, you know what? I could get in there and I could do one set of two things. And I'll get in there and I do two exercises of one set, maybe two sets, and I'm in and out within like five minutes. And then I'll come in the next day and then I'll increase it to three exercises. And, and every day I'll add and add and add and add until I get back to them on a full blown routine. And by that time, a switch has been flipped. And now it's just like going from, it's like if you go all the way back to the very beginning video of the channel, it's just a work, it's just a gym tour of the video. In the very next video, I'm talking about how I'm just a fat guy who likes to work out and I'm not going to have any goals and I'm not going to have any like, you know, thing to aspire to. I'm just going to get in there and work out and be fat and gross and just post some things time to time. And then I think it's the very next video. I'm like, okay, I lied. I'm not just going to post videos from time to time and I'm not just going to try to lose weight just because I'm fat and gross. I am going to go at this full force and I'm going full throttle on it. So I think uh, I have that big issue with me and everything, but I think that's going to be it for me on this video. Um, is there anything else that you guys would like to add or anything y'all like to, to finish up with? No, I'm good. Good for the night. All right. Well, hey guys, we appreciate y'all watching. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, if y'all want to leave a like, we'd appreciate it. If you guys want to go ahead and subscribe to the channel and let's be honest, if you made it this far in the video, you enjoy the content. So you might as well go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if not, it's as simple as don't do it if you don't want to. And until next time, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Later.